If you're not a tax policy nerd, and most people aren't, trying to understand your city's budget probably sounds kinda nauseating. But your city or county's budget really matters. It defines what your municipality prioritizes and values. I have tried to understand municipal budgets before, and it can be seriously confusing. These budgets are almost always massive documents full of jargon, tables, and complexities that make it almost impossible to know what you're actually looking at. It's transparent in that the information is publicly available, but can you easily learn anything of value from it? Not really. This is why mapping municipal revenues and expenses visually is critically important. It's a prerequisite in understanding where the leaks in your bucket are, providing a method of transparency that helps cities improve their financial health. Uh, this is a great quote from Jack Stack, where he says that businesses should operate like an aquarium, where everybody sees what's going in, what's swimming around, and what's coming out. The same is true of governments, that we should understand the reporting and what's going in and swimming around and coming out. Let me show you what I mean using Springfield, Missouri as an example of how money flows through a city. This graph shows the average combined city and county tax revenue sources of every state. In Maine, 99% of the average combined city-county tax revenue comes from property taxes. Property taxes provide the benefit of connecting land use and land regulation, which is directly within a community's control. But relying too heavily on one source of tax revenue can also be risky, which is why some states diversify their tax revenue sources. In Missouri, the state where Springfield is located, average combined city and county tax revenue sources are fairly diversified, with 61% coming from property taxes, 31% coming from sales taxes, and 9% coming from other tax revenue sources. But Springfield in particular actually gets just 11% of its tax revenue from property taxes, and 69% comes from sales taxes. Springfield relies on sales taxes much more than most cities. Relying too much on sales taxes can also have its own disadvantages, like if an unexpected event happens that disrupts sales tax revenue. When a municipality gets this revenue, that money flows into one of many distinct funds. And you can think of these funds as being like the actual bank accounts where the municipality stores its money. Most cities have so many funds that it gets really confusing really quickly. It can be super helpful to have a visual fund diagram that categorizes the funds into different fund types, depending on how the money in those funds can or must be used. These fund types themselves fall into two main categories. The first is proprietary funds, which operate like a business. They are self-funded services that operate off of their own revenue sources, like user fees, and would be theoretically capable of continuing to operate in the absence of tax revenues. The other type is governmental funds, which operate off of other revenue streams, like tax dollars. One of our favorite tools for visualizing municipal finances is the Sankey diagram, which we like to call the butterfly. On the left, you see the sources of revenue, like sales taxes, charges for services, property taxes, and revenues from other governments. These flow into funds, which we have shown grouped together using the five fund types we just talked about. On the right side, you can see the different expenditure categories. The general fund holds unallocated funds for the purpose of supporting core government services. It has the most flexibility for how the money inside of it gets spent. Springfield spends much of their general fund on public safety. Having a robust general fund can be helpful because there are few restrictions on how it can be spent, but it can also become problematic if those funds are rated and redirected based on changing political priorities. You can solve this problem by allocating specific funding sources to specific expenditure categories, and that's what the special revenue funds type is for. With special revenue funds, the revenues are allocated to a specific purpose, often with legal requirements. The capital project funds type allocates money for big projects where the expenditures happen over a multi-year period, like constructing buildings or other large assets. The enterprise funds type gets the vast majority of its revenue from charges for services. These funds mostly contribute to water and sewer, public works, the airport, and solid waste. The enterprise fund makes sure that when you pay your water bill, those revenues are being spent on providing the municipal water service. 
Last, the Internal Service Fund supports services within the government, as opposed to providing a direct service for the public. Let's highlight which of these funds are proprietary, meaning they operate like a business in a self-sustaining fashion, and which ones are governmental, meaning they operate off of other revenue sources, like tax dollars. And now you have a picture of how money flows through the city government of Springfield, Missouri, that's easy to read and understand. This diagram is the first step in seeing the flow of money in your city, and it can tell you a lot. For example, the second biggest spending category in Springfield is public safety, and much of that comes from the general fund, where money isn't allocated to a specific purpose. Based on that visual, you might learn that it could be worth looking into how that public safety money is getting spent. Without the visual, pretty much nobody in the general public is going to be able to process or interpret that vitally important piece of financial information. If you're trying to understand your municipality's budget, I should also mention that the budget in brief is a great place to start. If they've done a good job boiling it down, it provides a simple summary of what's contained within the larger budget document. There are other ways to improve transparency for citizens of local governments too. When citizens pay property taxes, they should be able to understand how those tax dollars are being used. We like to visualize this using a dollar bill by slicing it up to show you what proportion of your dollar is going to each taxing district and levy. Taxing districts and levies are the different entities that are allowed to impose property taxes to provide services. This only shows you the property tax revenues, so it's not a comprehensive overview of your government's finances. Interactive dashboards can also be an excellent way to take transparency to the next level. Interactive dashboards can allow citizens to use the budget data itself to create their own visualizations. It's easy to follow the money when you can see exactly where the money is coming from and where it's going to. Visualized budgeting is essential to communicating in an accessible, easy to understand way for people who deserve to understand how their city's budgeting works. So does this give us the full picture of what cities are paying for? Well, not necessarily. For that, we'll need to look at how budgets work over time.